As historical author Anthony Brandt has said, other things may change us, but we start and end with family. I've been picking the Commonwealth for 20 years, searching high and low at yard, estate sales, antique malls, thrift stores, junk shops, garages, and sometimes even barns for treasures I can pass on to new homes through eBay. But now as I watch my little ones growing up before my eyes, I find that my real treasures are right here with me every day. So join us as we pick, flip, and resell on our two eBay stores and in our two antique booths. Hi everybody, welcome back to Commonwealth Picker. My name is Kevin and we are in the eBay cave. I'm in here with Sophie. Hey Sophie, look. Hey girl, how you doing? There's no way. If you watch the show, Sophie used to stay down with me. Look at her. Now you're on the merchandise and that's not acceptable. There you go. She used to be able to stay down here with me. She works down here with me all day. But she knows that when I turn that camera on right there, that sometimes she gets treats because I need her to behave. So she will behave herself all day. She'll sit there and sleep if I'm doing shipping or taking pictures. No big deal. But she knows when that camera goes on, it's treat time if she misbehaves. So I have nobody to blame but myself for that. So unfortunately, Sophie, you're going to have to probably go. But let me see if I can talk about one thing first. So this is a new edition cassette tape. I bought, I bought this at Dirt Road Treasures. And it was in great shape. The case was in good shape. The insert's in good shape. The cassette was in good shape. I even played it, and I played it for a little while. I flipped it over and played it for a little while longer, maybe 30 seconds or so for each side, and I had no problems at all. And somebody bought it, I think for like $8.99 free shipping, nothing big. How you doing, girl? And I shipped it out to him, and I got a message back saying, hey, this thing doesn't work. I'm like, does it not work at all, or does it not, what's the deal? Like I said, no, I started playing it, and it worked for like 15 seconds, and then it stopped working. I'm like, okay. I'm like, hey, I tested this thing. It was working just fine on both sides. But hey, they say it doesn't work, so you're going to take the return. That's what you're going to do. And they shipped it back to me, and I got it. And actually, my boy drops things off at the post office for me, and he checks my box and brings stuff home. So he checked the box. This was in there. He brought it home. I'm like, I got to go test this thing. Not that it matters at this point. So I sat here, and I played it. I played the whole thing on one side, and I played the whole thing on the other side, and it worked perfectly. So the only thing I can think of is this person put it in there for like the very last song on one side because one side stops like two minutes before the cassette ends, maybe even three. And they, they heard the end of one song and they just played and played and they couldn't hear anything. Either that or there's something wrong with their cassette player. But at any rate, I took the return and I relisted it because it works just fine. That's the kind of stuff you deal with every once in a while, unfortunately. you know, Or fortunately, it was just on a small item this time. Are you growling at me? All right. And that reminds me, I talk about Rideshare Reseller out there in California, and he has a YouTube channel, and he has been killing it out there, making money. Holy cow, the dog jumps. She never jumps down. And he had a return, and he caught a scammer, and I think I attached it to a video on Commonwealth Flipper, but it really is neat. So if you have a chance to go to Rideshare Reseller, he caught, literally caught, a scammer over there, and he ended up with two machines he had sold one, they sent the wrong one back. He ended up getting the right one back and was able to keep the other one and didn't have to refund the money. Crazy. So that's an awesome little deal and I want you to go take a look at that video if you get a chance. And Sophie is rambunctious, aren't you girl? So we're gonna let you go. We're gonna get you a treat and y'all say goodbye out there, Sophie. We'll let you go upstairs, okay? All right, here is a Barbie. This is brand new, obviously. And it is a, let's, let's see, Team Stacy. it's gymnastics. I hope this was this was Reagan's. I have no doubt. So I don't know who's watching this show. So I'm hoping that Blue Ridge Mama is smart enough to tell me that if I sold this thing, I shouldn't put it on this video. 
if somebody who gave it to her is watching this thing. <laughs> it's like, hey, I got that for her for Christmas last year, but I haven't seen it before. It may have been a multiple. She may have got two of these from somebody. For some reason, I, I remember this thing, and there was a little... I can't remember. So that may be the case. She might have got two of these last year and didn't take it back. Who knows? At any rate, she put on the Homeschool Hustler store and it sold for $22.95 plus shipping. And we are going to give Reagan probably all of this money, minus fees and minus shipping. And maybe she can buy some gifts for her friends or buy some gifts for her, her daddy or buy some gifts for her brothers or something like that. So Homeschool Hustler store, $22.95 plus shipping. All right, we've had a couple of these sell so far. This is a size large, $16.41. Paid like uh, after taxes, after the whole nine yards, under $5 for this shirt. We're not making a lot of money, but we had tons of them. There was only two more of this particular one available. And it's, you know, brand new with tags. It's got the Coleman lantern. It's pretty nice. It's not a bad little gift. I think originally these things were supposed to be like 40 some dollars. And so we're selling them at a pretty decent price, but they have taken forever. Matter of fact, right behind this camera on the other side of you guys is where I stack these shirts up nice and folded. And we still have a bunch of uh, different sizes, but it looks like there's probably 30 still left. So we probably have just now broke even on these shirts. Not the best retail arbitrage buy. Got it from Sam's Club. But like I said, you'll eventually make money on most retail arbitrage items. Unfortunately, that comes long after you get just sick and tired of it. That reminds me of an episode. I was watching a lot of Josh the other day, and he found one of my very... It was my very first retail arbitrage item. Actually, it was my second. It was my second retail arbitrage item. My first was a lot of baseballs I bought from Sam's Club in 2000 and, late 2001, 2002. And he found a L'Oreal Microderm Abrasion Kit in the old silver box. And I did retail arbitrage on those at Walmart. They were clearing them out of Walmart in 2002, I think for three fifty a box, and there were just stacks and stacks of them. And I bought every single one they had, and I think I was selling them at the time for like thirteen, twelve ninety five plus shipping, something like that. It was interesting because I knew nothing about anything back then. People were sending you cash and envelopes. They were sending you cashier's checks and money orders, and it was just an interesting time on, on the wild, wild west of eBay. And I was making hundreds of dollars a week selling microderm abrasion kits. And that got me addicted. So a retail arbitrage item is what got me addicted. And now retail arbitrage drives me nuts most of the time. Although sometimes you're going to make a killing. It doesn't take much. You just need to make a little bit of money on something that sells over and over and over again. And you're golden. All right, so this is kind of retail arbitrage. I bought it from Goodwill. They were 99 cents for these Rubbermaid mop covers. I bought them. I bought a ton of them. I bought every single one they had. Matter of fact, there were so many of them. I went to all the Goodwills in the area, just kept looking for them. One of the Goodwills had them at $1.99. And I'm like, hey, they got them at 99 cents over at this place. And they called up and, and they gave it to me. The other one had them at 99 cents. I bought them all. Another one had them at $1.99 and they wouldn't budge on the price. And I didn't buy them. So, you know, you just do what you got to do. They're only going for $9.95 plus shipping and I have three left. But I probably bought 70 of them, I think. I don't know, maybe not that many. But I had a whole giant tub just packed to the gills with them. And so you're only making like four fifty, five bucks on these things. But they're so light. I mean, they're four ounces if you put them in a poly bag. So your, 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 your shipping costs are next to nothing. You make one listing and it, how long does it take to ship this thing? You know, I click my... Uh, if you're doing the bulk shipping, it probably takes just over a minute start to finish to ship this thing so if you're making 450 you know let's say it takes two minutes if you count the one listing i did a year and a half ago you know because that's all the work that's going into it at this point so let's say it takes two minutes and let's say i'm only making four dollars on this thing it still means i'm making 120 bucks an hour on this item which is definitely worth it all right i want to show you this and this is going to look like a mess so this is a frosty the snowman inflatable and the box is literally torn up i mean it is just garbage it's why i have it in here let me take it out for you for a second there you go and literally look at that i mean there is no box it pretty much is falling apart i'm gonna put it in the box i guess when i ship it this i paid five bucks for this my uncle's like why are you doing that and and 
I probably shouldn't have, to be honest with you, but I'm like, I'm going to sell this thing for 25 bucks plus shipping. He's like, no, you're not. And I didn't. I sold it for 20 plus shipping. So I'm still making like $13, $14. Um, actually, I'm making it a little bit more than that, but I paid my boy to inflate it and take pictures of it. And I pay him by the hour. So I paid him a couple bucks uh, to do that. It didn't take him too long, maybe 10 minutes altogether. So he didn't make too much money off of me. But I'm still, after all that, just for taking pictures, listing it, and shipping it out in a different box, I'm going to still make like $13 profit on it. And this one is going global shipping program. I used to do tons of global shipping program. Now we're doing a little bit, uh, thanks to, to Lonnie and some other folks who have uh, turned us all on to this, we're doing some flat rate international. But this one is just about at four pounds. And I left it on global shipping because I, I wasn't sure when I listed it. I didn't have them weigh it. So I don't like to go. I like to do global shipping if they're over over four pounds. That's another thing. If, if I would have taken pictures of that thing in that box, it would not have sold. And I see so many listings of used inflatables out there just in the box. And they just sit there or they don't get big money. If you get an inflatable, just think in your mind you're going to get 10 to 20% more at least if you take it outside, if it's used, if you take it outside, inflate it, and take your pictures while it's inflated. And then take somebody, if it's, you know, maybe your wife or your husband or your dog or somebody, and try to scale the picture for them by having somebody stand next to it. Because, you know, some people, three and a half feet, to say that in a listing is one thing, but to see it outside, this thing looks like it's five foot tall in the picture up there. So maybe even larger. So you scale it and you put something next to it. Sometimes I'll take the homeschool hustlers and they'll take a picture. Um, I think they did that with the Grinch. And we sold the Grinch because the Grinch looks massive compared to little Turner up there. All right, so here is the last of our Scrabble lot. So there's 12 of these Scrabble boards. And they're a little bit different. Most of them are almost identical. There's a couple that are just slightly different. I don't want to drop them here. But there are some Scrabble boards that are made differently that fold different ways or don't fold at all. And I usually don't, I usually just get rid of those. But the ones that fold like this, I'll put them in a lot together. There are 12 of them and they sold for $19.88. And you might think, is that worth your time? Well, it's not if this is all I was selling. But at this point, this is all pure profit. Or we could reverse it and say it this way. I won't pay more than a dollar for a Scrabble board or for a Scrabble game. Um, I usually try to pay 50 cents for a Scrabble game. So I probably have, for the entire Scrabble game that's represented here, I probably have about, let's say, $8 into this. And so just this alone, selling these, cover my cost and give me about a $10 profit. Well, I sold the Scrabble pieces for like 60 bucks, and then I sold the Scrabble racks for like another 30 bucks so you're making pretty good money if you part these out and you store them away for like a year's worth of yard sales but don't pay more than a buck um, i suppose you could pay two bucks and still make money but really to make it worth your time of counting scrabble tiles you should probably pay a buck or less for these bought this in a lot of dvds for uh, resale in our antique booths and sometimes out of if you buy a massive lot of dvds and or blu-ray or something there's some things that will sell and most of the time it's a series of some sort. I sold a bunch of History Channel things and that usually pays for my CDs and DVDs and then I put them in the booths and just make basically pure profit off of those. This one was one of those, but I saw it and it was brand new. I'm like, hey, we're gonna give this to Turner for Christmas and it'll be a nice cheap Christmas gift because we didn't pay hardly anything, you know, a quarter or something. And so I gave it to Blue Ridge Mama. I'm like, hey, you want me to wrap this thing up? She says, he already has it, so. I guess I should know that already. He probably has everything. But this is going to... I listed this today and it sold within eh, maybe about an hour and a half. So I put it just under. I wanted it to go out for a Christmas gift. I probably could have got $8.99. But I got $8.50 free shipping. It'll go out today. All right, some of you will be sad to see this one go. You've seen it up here for a long, long time. I bought a ton of Disney stuff. Tons of it for a dollar an item at a yard sale in Roanoke, Virginia at the very, very beginning of the summertime. I was with my brother and this one is for paper clips. You can see the magnet here at the bottom of this thing. And I haven't sold too many of these. I sold a, a stapler like this, but I still have the tape dispenser and the notepad for it. It's the goofy tape dispenser. They're like totem style. 
That's the way I listed them. I said Disney Tiki. What's that? The Tiki Room? That's what it is. The Tiki Room. Is that in Frontierland? You go into Frontierland? Or maybe it's Adventureland. Off to the left when you go into Disneyland. Sorry, folks. I've never been to Disney World. But you go through, I think it's Adventureland. Frontierland's off to the right. Do I have that right? And then off to the left, you see the Tiki Room right when you go in there. And at any rate, y'all help me out. Matt, part-time pickers out there, I know you're a Disneyland guy. Let me know. My parents grew up just down the road in Fullerton, so, and lived all over Orange County, and then I grew up in San Bernardino County. So, this one hasn't sold yet, but it was a buck. I got it out there for a pretty decent price. And then there's a Donald Duck notepad. So, it's kind of neat. It uh, is listed Disney Tiki Mask Face Totem Resin Desk Pencil Paper Clip Cup Mickey Donald Goofy. So you guys, it's just a this is a, a nonsense title, but it gets all the keywords in there, and it's sold. And this thing sold for twenty four ninety five plus shipping. So it's like a twenty two dollar profit, which is really nice. And one of the great benefits of having a YouTube show is this: me and my wife went through a free bucket the other day on the other channel, the Commonwealth Flipper channel, and we had a good time doing that. And this was in that free bucket. And we were debating, is this uh, Puff the Magic Dragon or is this Peach Dragon? And I remember after I did the video, I'm like, no, Peach Dragon had the had the wings on it. That's not what that is. So we asked the viewers out there, and of course, Kevin, KP Trainum out there said, hey, I think that's Lollipop, Lollipop Dragon. And my wife said, yeah, and she looked it up and said, yep, that's it, so. If you need somebody who has completely useless pop culture knowledge from the late 80s, early 90s, Kevin's your guy. Thanks, buddy. By the way, I don't think this thing's worth anything, but it was a load off my mind figuring out where it was from. As is this right here. See if anybody can guess this. I had to figure this one out, too. It was driving me nuts. And it's from 19... I'll let you figure it out now. It's from 1998. I think it's 98. And it is Warner Brothers. And once I figured out that I was reading it wrong, I thought it was 1993, I figured it out pretty quick. It doesn't have much value. I think I'm going to list it on the Homeschool Hustler store for like $6.99 because nothing else is out there like it. I don't know if I'll get it or not. We'll see. All right. Well, as always, thanks so much for joining us. And we hope you're getting ready for your Christmas season and you're getting your Christmas shopping done. And thank you all so much for supporting us, for supporting the Homeschool Hustlers, Blue Ridge Mama, my whole family, our store, our channel. You guys are amazing. We'll see you next time. Poshmark? Poshmark. How much? Mm, 70. I can't remember. She sent me a question about the measurements, and then I sent her an offer for a little bit off of what I had, and she took it. All right, Blue Ridge Mama had a sale. On the Kari. I had spotted these in Goodwill a long time ago. I don't know why I had remembered seeing that TUK before, but they have cute little shoes. I had seen some kitty cat shoes one time online. So this was a peacock design. Um, they have some that are white with the same design that are really popular. But these sold on Macari for $23 from an offer. Alright, nice sale. How much you pay? $2.99 or whatever they are at Goodwill. Okay. $2.99. Nice. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, so I've sold VHSs on eBay for years and years, and I haven't put any up this season. Usually I wait till January to start doing that, uh, even though they sell fairly good at Christmas time. So it's a really nice one. I paid 50 cents for it, and I just tested it, and it's working, and it would sell on eBay. But I did an experiment last month, and I took a VCR to the booth. And we're going to have, my, my intention is to have like a vintage electronic booth as soon as the Christmas stuff clears out. And I put a VCR in there and it sold in about three weeks for 12 bucks, I think is what we charged for it. So it's not amazing. And we could probably make a little bit more on eBay, but it's so easy. Test it, take it in the booth, put a sticker on it and drop it off. So we're gonna do that with this one, see how long this one takes to sell. I have a death pile of VCRs over there, but this might help me uh, reduce it a little bit. <laughs> Thank you.